Hi, and welcome to a new tutorial. The dinosaurs among us floopers still know times as edit events was the only automation option available in FL Studio. With the appearance of automation clips, this original method fell more and more into oblivion. For me too. Respectively users who came to FL Studio after the release of automation clips most likely never touched this first mode at all. What's actually a shame. Luckily I got recently a request to do a video on edit events, which forced me to recapture my old and forgotten knowledge. And I must say, I'm annoyed with myself that I have never touched it again since then. It got so much tricks under its sleeves and simply doesn't deserve this stepmotherly treatment. Hopefully with this video I can arouse or reawaken the interest for this great feature. At the very end, automation clips and event automation are like fraternal twins. They are doing the same but in a different way. Each of them has their advantages and shortcomings. That is why it's such a shame that event automation has been forgotten and all its advantages with it. Event automation differs, the manual says, in two main aspects from automation clips. For me it's more likely at least three. First automation is bound to a pattern. While an automation clip is a generator itself. Here the event automation can make a point as it spares us at least one additional playlist track for the automation. And it's easier to copy as copying the pattern carries the event automation with it automatically. This makes it perfect especially for repeating automation, which for example belongs to the sound design. Like sample and hold or sequence style automation or fear the filter cutoff, which shall be always playing when the pattern plays or for example the needed automation for a riser or downlifter. Where we are already at point 2, which the manual just mentions as a side note, but it's a fantastic feature which one cannot underrate at all. A pattern can contain an unlimited number of event automation. For this riser and downlifter I automated quite a bunch of parameters. But I still got just one pattern clip. Doing the same with automation clips would look like this. Like a container the pattern clip holds my note data and all of the automation curves neatly in a single clip. I always need the whole automation data for every iteration of this pattern anyway. And duplicating one clip duplicates everything I need in one step. Third, you can only record automation as event automation. It is not possible until now, this might change at some point in time, to record into automation clips directly. So everybody who likes to record automation still needs to use event automation anyway. Normally I would have mentioned a fourth and a fifth point. You can convert event automation into an automation clip but not the other way around. And event automation doesn't appear in the link to controller window, so it helps to unclutter the list for bigger projects. To automate the parameter with events besides recording, there are several ways. As event automation is bound to a pattern, first select the pattern you want to hold the automation. For native plugins and FL Studio internal parameters, I can just right click the control and choose edit events. For automating third party plugins or native FL Studio parameter just move the control and right click the multi link to controllers knob. Tools last tweaked or right clicking the corresponding entry in the browser. For automating multiple parameters activate the multi link to controllers function by clicking on the button or hitting Ctrl J. The event editor pops up and in this list we find the available controls. This is another great function of the event automation. In every place and for every pattern we've got all already assigned parameters available per session. After saving a project 
the recent list is cleared and you can access just the parameters which got actually automation data present per pattern. Here automation clips and event automation complement each other very well. While automation clips can control multiple parameters with just one envelope, We do have always available all parameters we assigned already to event automation in every editor and every pattern. We can edit event automation data in two places, in the event editor or in the piano roll. Both places reflect all assigned parameters. We all know the ways to open the piano roll editor. The event editor though is a different story. There are two and a half ways to open it. First, right click a parameter in the already bespoke places and choose edit events. You can use this method as often as needed, no matter if you have already automation present for it or want to add new data. Second, if you have already a pattern containing event automation, you can use the current project folder or tab. Click on pattern, Choose the pattern which holds the data and right click any present parameter and execute the same command. The last one is just a half because it just works under one condition. As long as pattern just contained event data but no node data, you can double click the pattern in the picker panel. As soon as node data is present, either from recording, entering in the piano roll editor, or from the step sequencer. A double click opens the piano roll editor. Just if only event data is present but no node data, a double click opens the event editor. I wish there would be an entry present in the right click menu to open the editor, but sadly, these are the only ways to go. So far for today, in the next video I put online very soon, we will have a look into the usage of event automation and the editor window. Have a good time, stay tuned and thank you for watching.